If you want to simplify your Azure Service Bus development setup, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you how to run Azure Service Bus using the emulator, and we're going to integrate everything together using Aspire, which has a native hosting package that's going to allow you to run Azure Service Bus locally, but also a client-side integration that's going to make using Azure Service Bus in your .NET apps simpler. A quick intro if you are new to Azure Service Bus, it's a managed messaging solution in the Azure cloud, and it comes with two infrastructure components that you can use to send and receive messages. The first one is a simple message queue where you input a message on one end and consume it on the other. Queues are a one-to-one -one communication channel. On the other hand, we have topics which can have their subscriptions and this is more interesting because it allows you to publish one message but be able to consume it multiple times for each subscription. Aspire makes using Azure Service Bus significantly simpler so I'm going to walk you through the technical setup from integrating the emulator to setting up your queues topics and subscriptions and finally using them to send and receive messages. Let's start from the Aspire app host, where I have two .NET applications. One is a front-facing API, which our UI clients are going to communicate with, and the other is a background worker that's going to just send out notifications, and it does this by reacting to messages that come from Azure Service Bus. So your first integration approach is using the actual Service Bus service in the Azure cloud, and you can integrate it with .NET Aspire with a simple connection string. You would set this connection string in your application settings or an environment variable, and then you can use it to connect to Service Bus from your two applications. Now, we are interested in running Azure Service Bus locally, and we can add it as an Aspire hosting integration. So I'm going to look for Service Bus, and I'll install the latest version of Aspire hosting Azure Service Bus. This will allow us to run the Service Bus with an emulator. So let me show you what this is going to look like. I'm going to store it in the same variable. So I'll say Service Bus, and then we're going to say Builder at Azure Service Bus. And let's give it the same name so that the connection string with the client integration also matches. Now we're going to say as emulator or rather run as emulator and this is going to start the service bus emulator but also a SQL server instance that it uses for persistence. Now once you have the service bus resource this is where you can start adding your service bus queues or your service bus topics. Adding a queue is as simple as calling add service bus queue and giving your queue a name let's call it orders. If you need to further customize the queue you can say with properties and then pass in a delegate to configure anything you'd like on the queue. For example, the max delivery count could be interesting. This controls how many times a message can be delivered before it's dead letter, let's say five times. The next thing we can create is a topic by calling add service bus topic. And I'm going to call this the order events topic. And here I'm going to store this in a variable. Similarly, you can also say with properties and further customize the topic with the available options. I'm going to omit this for simplicity's sake. Now, once we have the topic resource, we have an option to add a subscription. And you can add multiple subscriptions, and when you publish a message into a topic, it's going to be copied and delivered to all the subscriptions. Now, for the subscription, I'm going to call it notifications. And similarly, we can also customize the subscription properties and for example, I can set the max delivery count here to, let's say, free. Now, what's also interesting with subscriptions is you can add filters to the messages that you want to receive. And you can do this using the rules property where you can add a new rule. It's an Azure Service Bus rule. And this exposes the correlation filter property that allows you to set how you would like to filter specific messages. For example, you can use the content type property or any of the other available rules. Of course, we have to give our rule a name. So you can see you have quite a bit of options here. I'm going to omit the rule definition. And with this setup in place, we are going to create an Azure Service Bus instance with Aspire, run it locally using an emulator, add a queue, a topic, and one subscription to this topic. Now, I'm also referencing this resource from my two API applications, and this is going to assign the respective connection strings. If I start my Aspire app host, you can see this is going to spin up a couple of resources. Obviously, the most interesting one is the Azure Service Bus resource. As I said, this uses the Service Bus emulator Docker image, 
to run this as a container. And this is what's going to contain our queue topic and subscription definition. Additionally, this is also going to start an instance of SQL Server also running in a container, which is used for persistence. If we open up one of our services and scroll down to connection strings, we should see an Azure Service Bus connection string with the respective value, and this points to a local instance of Service Bus. Considering that the emulator is also a container, we can configure it just as any other Aspire resource. For example, I can set the container lifetime to persistent to prevent restarting the Service Bus instance every time I run my Aspire application. One last note before we move into the client-side integration is with this setup here, where I define a Service Bus resource either as an Azure Service Bus instance or using a connection string, what you could do is depending on if you are running Aspire, or publishing, you can write a ternary operator to assign to assign to the service bus instance. So you can say builder execution context and let's say is run mode. Then in this case, you can run the emulator or if this value is too false, you can assign the connection string value. And this just gives you a bit more flexibility when deploying your Aspire application. Now moving into our .NET applications or rather the ASP.NET Core APIs, I already have my service bus integration here using the service bus messaging library. And the typical approach here is you configure a service bus client as a singleton service and you can see I'm just fetching the respective connection string and registering a new instance of the service bus client. I'm using this inside of my service bus publisher where the client is used to create a respective sender for either the queue or the topic and we're going to send some message to our service bus instance. Now Aspire also has a client side integration for using service bus. So I'm going to look for that. It's called Aspire Azure Messaging Service Bus. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. And how you use it is by saying builder add Azure Service Bus client. Now we have to specify the same connection string name as the example below. And I'm going to comment out this registration of the service bus client because the above method is going to do the same thing. If you want to enable telemetry for Azure Service Bus, you have to set a switch, the Azure Experimental Enable Activity Source, to true, and then you'll start seeing telemetry data show up for the service bus that we are running in the emulator. And I'm just going to repeat this same setup inside of my other application. I'll copy the Aspire hosting package, or rather the client package, directly into my project file. And we want to call add Azure Service Bus Client. So let's go ahead and add that and I'll comment out the previous service bus client registration. And now let me walk you through a quick demo of using the service bus client. I'll send a post request to my API, to the API slash orders endpoint. And I've got a dummy JSON body here that represents some order. So if I hit send, we're going to land on a breakpoint in the online store API. And here we're going to create an order created event. And this basically simulates creating a new order. This uses the service bus publisher to publish the respective event. And we have to create a new service bus message. This is an abstraction from our client SDK, which is going to wrap the contents of our order event, which will be serialized to JSON. So then I can use the service bus client, which we got from dependency injection. And I can create a queue, send a message, create a topic and send a message to the topic. And in the meantime, I hit another breakpoint in my online store notifications service, which has a background worker that's going to start processing messages from the queue and from the topic. Now, what this looks like is we use the same service bus client to create a processor for either the queue or the topic. The difference is with a topic, we also have to specify our respective subscription name and the processor exposes a callback called the process message async, which accepts a delegate that I specified here and this is the breakpoint that we hit. We get a process message event args object, which we can use to access the message body. And as you can see, this contains our message serialized as JSON. So we can deserialize it and then process this message. I'll just log some info to the console and let me hit continue. We're going to hit the second breakpoint because we sent two messages. And if I hit continue, it may happen again because some of the messages can be retried. Now behind the scenes, I'll remove the breakpoints and send the same request again. And I'm just doing this so that we can get a cleaner distributed trace. And if we jump into the Aspire dashboard, I want to quickly show you the resource graph. 
so that you can see what's going on here. The Azure Service Bus resource is at the core of this graph. You can see the SQL Server instance here. We also have our queue, the topic, and the respective subscription. Now, I wanted to show you the distributed trace. We can find it here, but let's also take a look at this one, which is interesting. Here, you can see one of my messages failing because I was stuck on a breakpoint and this caused a timeout and for the same message to be delivered again. So these are the errors that you are seeing here. Now, if we take a look at a clean trace, it would look something like this. So we have our API request to the orders endpoint, sending a message using Azure Service Bus. And then our second process, the online store notifications instance, is going to already pick up the message from the service bus because it's running locally even before we complete the actual API request. Here you can see we're picking up the message from the queue and we end up processing that pretty quickly. The second example here is the order events topic and the respective notification subscription. And you can see an example of picking up the message from the subscription and processing that in the background. And we were able to implement all of this by running the service bus instance locally using the emulator that's available as an Aspire integration. I think this is an excellent option for local development and even testing. You could write some practical integration tests using the emulator. It's also much faster than running a remote resource. Setting everything up in the Azure cloud is time consuming and it's sometimes problematic sharing the same service bus instance between a team of developers. With the emulator, we now get a clean development story where everyone can run their own service bus instance and we won't run into any conflicts during development. If you're interested in learning more about Azure Service Bus and how to set up everything in the cloud, I have a video walking over this from scratch, step by step, that I think you'll enjoy. If you liked this video, go ahead and smash the like button. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.